Yo, what's going on, everybody? I am back with another Keeping It Real podcast. It's your boy, and this is number 15. WHO, what you gonna do? Shoot him up with the Wuhan flu. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So, there, if you don't know right now, this is a Kane Brown hat. If you don't know who Kane Brown is, right there, singer, songwriter. From a concert, baby. Rocking it. Rocking it. Wearing a Rowan University shirt right now. I'm about to grill the universities, but we'll get we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh what I just started off with was uh Sa- there's a comedian, Sasha Barra Cohen, and he's from he <laughs> he's from a lot of things, but he's from Bruno and Borat. If you do not if if you're familiar with those movies, you obviously know who I'm talking about. And you know what we're dealing with, what kind of guy we're dealing with. So this guy showed up at some like, I guess it was like a country kind of Western. It must have been like, it looked like middle of the country type stuff. And um, a lot of white people, a lot of white people. And um, he was wearing like this, um, this outfit that this guy that was on stage singing was wearing before. And he was wearing like this like fat costume and he was singing in overalls with like a fake beard. And he starts singing. He was like, Bo, like Barack Obama, what we going to do? Shoot him up with the Wuhan flu. And then he started getting the crowd to sing that shit with him. So they were singing, WHO, what we going to do? Um, and then what they do? Chop him up like the Saudis do. <laughs> so he had these people singing along. They were like, they were like chop him up like the Saudis do. Woo! And they were singing along with him. And then they realized that he was like a comedian and it was like a fake thing. And they were like, oh, fuck. So they tried to get him off stage. But apparently, like, he had his, like, security with him. And he was up there for, like, eight minutes. He's up there for eight minutes straight just singing. And the crowd was, like, singing with him. It was idiots. But that's Sasha Bear coming for you. What are you going to – what else do you expect? What else do you expect? But what's going on, everybody? It is another Keeping It Real podcast. Before we get started, smash that like button. Drop a comment. Drop a comment about anything. If you want to, if you, you hear some stuff later in this podcast, drop a comment. But please drop a comment and uh, help your boy get on this YouTube algorithm. Also, if you want to follow me on the gram, link will be in the description. If you want to check out my personal vlog, link will be in the description. But what's going on, everybody? I'm chilling. I'm back with another podcast. It's nice. It's nice to be back. It's been a few days away. Feels nice. Singing on the mic, talking on the mic, sipping on that, sipping on that cough. Really excited to uh, get my morning routine fully back in back in gear. You know, my like I said, my groin has been giving me some issues, and the gyms closed down have been very annoying, to say the least. You know, my my main form of exercise was a lot of running, and uh, I was okay with that. But at the same time, you know. I got some weights at my house, not too much, but enough to be able to get some stuff done. So finally, you know, waking back up. I've been getting up and reading. Dude, about to finish this book all about freaking Lewis and Clark. I'll talk about some Lewis and Clark in a little bit. Yeah, some crazy dude, some craziness, bro. These guys were some savages. <laughs> but um, waking up nice and early, exercising right away, going, doing my reading, doing my thing, getting, getting my stuff going, getting my vlogging, getting my podcasting. So very excited to uh, get back on the grind, get back on the, uh, get back with the with the lifting in the morning. You know, I, I was deciding, I was switching bef- between lifting and running during the mornings, but I'm just gonna keep it like lifting every morning, and I'll be running it anyway. So just doing both at times. So it is what it is. You know, really getting back on that grind. Hopefully that my groin. I went on a one mile run the other day. You know, my gro- honestly, it feels kind of good right now. You know, so we'll see. Maybe do a little uh, leg exercise after this. I was already lifting this morning, but we're feeling good. We are feeling right. Hope everybody is treating themselves good. You know, the the, the corona cases are increasing, so you might want to start getting back on the healthy wave if you were, you know, falling off a little bit. And uh, or maybe if you were getting, you know, if you were getting going, you know, corona maybe scared you when you started eating healthy. Maybe it's time to get back on that healthy wave because I'm sure you probably fell off. And if you didn't fall off, then tsh, all power to you. Keep trudging. Keep chugging through. Keep trudging through the frickin' through the high waisted waters of the diet and the exercise monsters. 
the demons in your head telling you to eat the tasty cakes, eat the uh, the candy canes, eat the ice cream. Do the ice cream. The ice cream's a killer. I don't have a lot of ice cream because I don't buy it. That's that's the key is just not buying it. But bro, when you do go out and you're like, all right, I'm buying some ice cream. I'm get you get some fucking ice cream. You're like, I'll get this. I'll get that. I'll get this. And then you feel like shit. And you're like, oh. <laughs> but yo what's going on everybody i'm back with another podcast guys i'm very excited to announce that we got some the second microphone is on the way like i said it's sold out it's sold out but it, it should be coming on the way any freaking day now so i'm very excited to announce that you know i got my cables if you can see right here i don't want to unplug it or mess it up but we got a Cable for the microphone, so we got extra cables now. I got some, we got the arms, we got the chairs. We're setting it up. We're setting it up. I'm all ready to go. I'm all ready to go. But now with these corona cases increasing, I'm going to have to fight. I'm going to have to social distance. I'm going to have to. So, bro, what's going on? I'm going to have to sit over here. And he's going to have to sit over there, but it is what it is. It is maybe wear some masks and stuff. Dude, it's so weird wearing masks, like going out somewhere and everyone has a mask on. It's fucking weird, bro. It's so weird. I don't like it. I don't like it. But what are you going to do? There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to deal with this whole coronavirus than, than the way we've been dealing with it, honestly. Like shutting down the economy, shutting down all businesses. And then we then the protest. You can't tell me that the protest doesn't help with the 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 increase in in uh cases obviously people are protesting to each other next to each other so at beaches beaches i was at the beach the other day dude i probably fucking got corona you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's not funny that's not funny but it kind of is crazy you know what i'm saying i was at the beach the other day there was hella people hella people at the beach so i mean no shit yeah so it's crazy i don't know i don't know but all you can do take them take that vitamin C, take some supplements, take eat your eat your greens, eat your fruit, eat your vegetables, get your protein, get your nutrients, and then uh yeah wash your wash your hands, stay clean, go out on the wilderness, eat some bugs, get to get a little bit of bacteria maybe. There's some people that believe that that, that that's what you got to do. You just got to live in somewhat the bacteria. Like there's this guy, um. Like Joel, Joel Einstein or something like that. Something Joel, Joel something. And he owns like a really nice fresh, fresh food farm, like fresh animal raised farm. He actually has a really nice chicken farm. And I don't know if he does. I'm assuming he does cows and dairy as well. But the way he does his chicken coops is really interesting. And um, yeah, well, oh yeah, he does have cows because now that I'm about to tell a story. It's about cows. And he goes with the cows and like he, he lets people come on there and pet the cows and pet the animals and get some of the bacteria. Just like like live with the animals a little bit, you know, live with and like see and like experience what they're about to eat and what they're about to like um, put on, put like have as a meal. So they do that. And uh, what this guy believes is that like you want the soup of bacteria in your body. So your your body's constantly fighting off organism so your immune system's constantly on guard and basically strong and always strong always strong and always working so he like goes with the cows and he like drinks from the same water as the cows every once in a while just to get the same the same goop from their tongue and stuff like that which is kind of freaking gross but i don't know dude he said he hasn't gotten sick he says he hasn't gotten sick in like 30 40 years <laughs> that's respect though that's respect like i'll be honest though i'll be honest i can first hand first hand like when i was in college last year ooh i was a little i guess you could say unhealthy i guess you could say i guess you could consider me unhealthy but just like the natural college diet you know what i'm saying going to the buffet all you can fucking eat like what the hell who's going to stop you so so you have that food and then you you're probably you're drinking you're doing whatever you're partying you're staying out late you're staying up late you're, you're you're waking up early, going to class, and then staying up late again, and maybe maybe hitting the gym, and then with all the craziness that you're doing, the gym's just throwing off your stomach. And you, honestly, you're sick a lot. You're really sick a lot. 
And if you're not going to the gym, like first semester, I didn't go to the gym at all, bro. I was six, like, just like, not like the flu, but just like, I just felt like shit every day. Like, oh, I think I got allergies. Oh, I think I got this. Oh, it's, it's really allergies. Allergies is crazy right now. Uh, I think I got like a little cold, like little things like this, bro. You're just constantly sick because your immune system's weak, bro. You're feeding your body like horrible food, low nutrient food, processed food, food that is literally like ripping apart your guts, your intestines and shit. Like it's, it's literally like putting your body on fire. It's insane. It's really crazy to think about. And then like looking at it now, like, I mean, knock on, knock on wood. I haven't been sick in, I don't know how long, like around, like right before Corona type happened. Like I, I, I almost got like a little cold and then I, I fought it off really hardcore. Like I was eating super healthy and drinking a lot of water. And within a day or two, I was perfectly fine, which is thank, thank God, you know what I'm saying? And I haven't been sick in really in oh, oh, about a year, about a year. I started taking all my diet and fitness really serious. Like about a year ago, I, I really started like running again and starting eating pretty good. And um, definitely for at least like the past eight months, I felt like no, like never about to get sick, never about to get sick. So it, it's really interesting. It's really interesting to take the two uh, perspectives. But uh, yeah, it, it it it's crazy. It's crazy. Nobody's promoting uh health, healthy food. Nobody's promoting healthy dieting. Nobody's promoting promoting health. Everybody's promoting fear. Nobody is promoting fitness and uh, well being. Everybody's just promoting scaredness wear a mask you're gonna wear a mask so you don't pass on to an asymptomatic person like okay the coronavirus is not going nowhere it's been around forever let's be real let's get let's get with the program also let's get with the fucking program that a chinese scientist came, that worked at the wuhan vi viral laboratory came out and was like yeah there's a small case of um Corona that we let out, it got leaked from the laboratory, blah, 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 blah. We don't really have a cure for it, blah, 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 blah. He got killed. He got straight killed. And and it was nothing. It was not. We, as a country, as a government, as media, we let China get away with so much. It's insane. It's insane. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with this coronavirus. Um, if there's a, if there's a true second wave um, we cannot shut down the government. Like we can't shut down. Dude, the economy is already taking. It's insane. It's insane. People unemployed out the ass, you know, this, everybody's going crazy. Nobody's working. Nobody has money. Nobody knows what the future holds. At the end of the day, man, we cannot be shut and 50% of deaths came from nursing homes, but that's not, that's not on broadcast. Too. That's not on television. It's, um, it's really a shame for our people. It's really a shame for our people. I see posting, I see people posting the stupidest things on Instagram, man. The, the dumbest things. Phil Murphy saying this. Fuck Phil Murphy, man. Phil Murphy's out here marching. He obviously doesn't. He tweets almost every day about social distancing. He did not social distance once. Like, it's okay. I don't care. But if we're going to do that, open these, open that motherfucker up. Open this motherfucker up. I'm okay with not social distancing. You know what I'm saying? But if you're going to do, if, if you're going to say that and your actions do not protect that or do not defend what you're saying, like, how can we take you serious? And how are people now still reposting your, your tweets? It's, it's, it's idiocy. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. People are so ignorant. Nobody's thinking for themselves and that's what they want. They don't want you to think you think for themselves. Like, man, it's the richest of the rich pulling the strings and, and funding all these different organizations, all these different hate groups. It's all these different polit political groups funding these things. It's craziness, man. But no one's talking about this. You want to know why? Because the, the politicians and these big corporations are funding the media. They're they're paying off the media. It's it's all white crime. It's all white collar crime. And it just gets flushed under the water because that's how it works. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. It, and at the end of the day, the working man's going to get fucked because the working man's going to argue with the other working man or the lower class working man. And they're just going to argue over the crumbs, the crumbs of the U.S. dollar. It's just, it's disgusting, man. It's disgusting. I don't know. I don't know what, what to solve. I don't know. Maybe less, less, less federal government control, less government in the banking system. I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but it's disgusting watching um, these people get mani- it's, it's crazy. Like, they're arguing with the same people. Like, I don't understand it. Don't understand it. 
And social media is so disgusting right now. Everyone's just an idiot. Every, everyone's just an idiot. And, and now everyone has an opinion and a platform to show off their ignorance. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to be an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's an idiot. I'm an idiot. But now we have a platform to just tweet whenever the fuck we want. Post, repost, repost, repost this. And I have yet to see anybody make a video and talk about something about how they feel about the situation that's going on. Or from their notes or from a text message from them. I've never seen that. I've only seen people repost things from pages that are obviously being funded by these by these organizations. It's 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 so in your face. It's so obvious and it's so aware and people do not see it and they're still reposting and they're still doing the dirty work. They're out there protesting and doing the dirty work, but they don't see what's really happening. It's insane. It's insane. It's really scary, man. It's really scary because now the uh, the government's got us by the fucking kahunas, man, by the kahunas. So, and then what? And then this elect Trump's an, Trump's an asshole. Let's, let's get that off the bat. Joe Biden? Joe Biden's the fucking answer with the Democratic Party funding all this craziness? Like, it's it's insane. Where do we go from here? Where the fuck do we go from here? As as any rational American is trying to figure this, is trying to look at it somewhat rationally, fuck both these guys. Fuck all these. Fuck all of them. Every politician in, on both sides should probably be in prison. They're all fucking criminals. So, like, we're arguing about, like, the same thing. That's the problem, is they're funding this argument it's me versus you. No, it's not. We both work at some shitty job we don't want to do. Like, let's be fucking real. Let's be fucking real. But nobody is paying attention. We're both going to be in college debt, bro. How about that? How about that? College is fucking us. Now let's talk about college. Let's go talk about the uh, these institutions. These institutions, number one, college is a, is a business plan that is not sustainable. You know, you can't really send these young kids out 40, 50 grand loans a year sometimes less luckily sometimes more which is insane let's just say uh 20 to fifty thousand dollars a year they're taking these loans out they get a job where they don't make nearly as much to be able to pay that shit off sometimes i mean maybe if you're a doctor maybe a dentist but then you're also in a lot more debt you're in maybe a, another hundred hundred thousand dollars in extra in extra loans you know what i'm saying because you have to stay in stay in school for longer maybe you have to go to harder school it, it, it's really it's it's just, it's insane. It's just not a sustainable business plan. Like you're, you're fucking 17 and 18 year old kids that are now in our society that are now the culture that's kind of brewing this up. Like I fucked up. I don't, it's crazy. And, um, it, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. It's very interesting to see, man. These, and when, when this is, this is, this is really important. This is really important because everybody goes after, it's really interesting to go to look at it in a perspective of, because when people talk about politics, when people talk about politics, you, the left and the right, right now, right now, anything considering the right, oh, you're, you're, you are a supporter of Trump, you are a rapist. <laughs> it's like some shit like that. It's like you support rape and you support like that. Like that's insane. And then if you're like, oh, you're on the left, you're a straight socialist, you are, you know what I'm saying? You are this and that. And it's just, it's really, it's really interesting. It's like, what the hell? Like, well, how is this going to ever make progress? How, how are we ever going to move forward from these two bounds of these generalizations? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's crazy. And when are, and, and when are people going to talk about the, the colleges? The colleges are promoting all this. Colleges are attacking. Their, the colleges and the institutions are promoting we have to be open. We have to include trans, LGBTQ, all this stuff. But right, and we're supporting that. We're supporting that. But the colleges are sweeping under the rug sexual assaults, harassment charges, all these assaults, rapes. They're sweeping it under the rug. They try to they try to they try to smash it at, at the at the college level before it ever leaves and hits hits the broadcast, hits the judge, hits the courts, hits the hits the law, hits the court of law. It's insane. It's criminal. It's criminal what these institutions are doing to these people. And especially to these young girls. And I you you never see these girls go after colleges. You never see these girls go after colleges. It's so fascinating. I was at Rowan, we would wake up 
I would get an email at least once a week about sexual assault on campus. At least, bro. It, that's insane. That's insane. At least once a week. If not, it could have been once a day. It could have been once a day and I'm just not getting the email or I'm just not. I mean, I barely checked that email. But all the time, all the time, you get an email. Oh, a sexual assault of a curly haired person sexually assaulted a, a young a young white haired woman or something. I don't know. And it's just crazy. And it's 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 once a week or it's more than that. It's probably more than that. And that's just my university. That's just my university. Like that's insane. But nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. They talk about, oh, we have to we have to watch our speech. It's freedom of speech. If I say something that makes me an asshole and everybody attacks me to be an asshole, like damn, bro. Like I, I can't be saying that. I have to learn. I cannot be saying that. Obviously, if you're threatening someone's life, yeah, that that's illegal. You can't do that. You can't threaten someone's life. But I mean, we can't just start throwing down people's speech and ideas. If someone has an idea and it's a bad idea, that's going to be a bad idea, right? That idea is going to eventually fail. But it's, it's, it's really interesting how, how these institutions, they try to, they try to shut down certain ideologies and certain, certain ideas and certain, <clears throat> certain forms of speeches and pe people's ideas. And, but, but nobody talks about, talks about the, um, the legality and that, and, and the sexual assaults and stuff like that. It's so, and it's, it's all political. It, that's what I'm talking about. Like it's so political because it's so obvious that the Democrat party is funding these, these universities, like just the way like these, these professors and stuff talk it, it's insane. It's insane. It's truly insane. It's crazy. But, um, it's, it's, it's somewhat fascinating. It's somewhat fascinating, but at the same time, it's scary because that's that this is our youth. This is who we are. You know what I'm saying? This is who we are teaching. This is who we are upbringing. This is who we are trying to teach and trying to grow into our future generations and then they're going to have to teach our future generate <clears throat> future generations and it's um it's a lot of um radical it's a lot of a lot of radical beliefs it's a lot of radical i don't know man it's crazy but like i said these institutions are these colleges are are they're somewhat failing us they somewhat are failing us man they really are and then in the aspect of financially they're completely failing us financially they're fucking us and they're all and financially it's, it's all financially owned by the government it's all government loans like are you kidding me like are you kidding me to say that it's not all funded and all incorporated and all entangled like that's an that's an insane statement like that's crazy but that's someone that's ignorant is going to say oh well you don't know what you're talking about uh, it's not all do that it's they hire a good professor and the professor just so happens to have that, but like, that's not true. Get your shit together, bro. Get your shit together. Come on now, son. Come on. <laughs> Come on now. Pe people try to give people the benefit of the doubt. And that's the problem is people know, people know people try to give people the benefit of the doubt. So then they manipulate them and they take advantage of them. And those are greedy people. Those are scumbag people. And people are scumbags. People are naturally greedy. People are naturally manipulative. So it's like, damn. Damn, these institutions. But I've been saying it. I've been saying it from the jump. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. God. But I I mean, I've been saying it. Like I've been saying it since since I first went. Since I first went. It's it's insane about the the sexual assaults and nobody talks about it. It's swept under the rug. It's swept under the rug. Maybe next podcast I'll come through with a statistic, but it's it's insane. It's insane. Nobody talks about it. That that's probably the biggest. That's got to be the biggest. The biggest fear of sending. Uh, if uh, now that I know, if I have like a daughter, and let's say college is like still a thing, and maybe you got to send her to college, I probably wouldn't. <laughs> but um, let's say I would. That's low key the biggest fear, is for her to get sexually assaulted and raped and and killed and murdered and kidnapped, whatever it is, drugged and. And like, that's really like, that's the realest fear. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I hope she doesn't get taken advantage in, in her classes and gets made fun of for being not as smart. Like that's, pff, what are we in elementary school? <laughs> I hope she gets to join the sorority and the sorority gets to accept her and she gets the bid to the sorority she wants to go. Yeah. That's all fun and nice till someone sexually assaults her when she walks home from a party and the school sweeps it under the rug and the guy gets fucking six months of probation and no fucking jail time. Like, 
you know what I'm saying though? You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. And I've talked about that. I talked about it in my other podcast, Chris D'Elia. Like you can't believe all girls. You can't, you like, hold on. We can't just do that. Especially, especially in the celebrity, uh, especially when it comes to celebrities. But I mean, it's so fascinating that these girls, like they, they're so quick to hop on the celebrities. They're so quick to hop. What about the institutions? Like, they, they want to get money from the celebrities. They want it, but they know they're not getting money from the institutions because it gets swept under the rug. It gets dealt at the at the the um the college level way before it hits the the legal level, and nobody talks about it. But your boy, your boy's been talking about it. We've been. This is podcast number fifteen, and we are still talking about it. Just wait till I'm, I'm gonna have some guests on eventually. Some I know there's some girls that go hard in the paint about this subject. There's some girls that go hard, and it's interesting. You know, it's interesting. And some of those, but the, the problem is some of those girls are, are willing to say, you got to believe girls at all costs. Like, all right, hold the fuck on. Like, hold the fuck on because we cannot do that. Like I said, the lacrosse, the lacrosse boys at Duke lost everything, lost their scholarships, their family lost their homes, paying for lawyer fees, paying for everything that had to happen. And then the girl came out and said that she was lying. And I don't think, I don't know if she went to jail. We got to start doing that. Justin Bieber got accused of, what is he doing? Sexually assaulting girls. If anybody, if anybody is getting sexually assaulted, it's fucking Justin Bieber by like fucking Usher and the music industry. Justin Bieber was getting probably fucking butt raped. Let's be real. <clears throat> I think I read some, read some articles about that as well. And I, that's no surprise to me. That's terrible, but it's no surprise to me. I don't think Justin Bieber is out here molesting girls or, or trying to, solicit sex with girls or underage girls i think that's ridiculous he seems like he seems like a nice ass dude i'll be honest with you and um but yeah he's suing this girl he's suing and dude like how can we ever how are we supposed to take someone serious with no fucking real name on twitter how are we supposed to take a twitter account serious number one Number one, there's no name on Twitter. You don't have a face on your Twitter. You have no pictures on your Twitter. And we're supposed to take this account serious. Like, get the, get out of here. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, this is ridiculous. So Justin Bieber is now suing this person for $20 million. And I don't know, if does this person have $20 million <laughs> to be able to give Justin Bieber? I don't know if it's like a famous person or if it's just like a regular Joe. Like, if it's a regular little Sandy old, Sandy Lou Who trying to get, Justin Bieber raped me. And then it's like, no, I didn't. Like, oh, fuck, he didn't. Like, what do I do now? It's like $20 million. It's like, I don't have $20 million. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Do you, do you just work for the rest of your life and your payments just go to Justin Bieber? Like, <laughs> that's how it should be, yo. It's like, you owe me $20 million. It's like, well, I don't have it. It's like, all right, well, you have, you work at you work at where? It's like, oh, well, we're going to work at, uh, I don't know where. I don't have a job. I work at a factory. All right, well, every every paycheck, I get 50%. What the, what the, until you're done paying me my 20 mil and most people don't make $20 million. So, <laughs> but dude, good for Justin Bieber. Like these girls that are lying need to be held accountable too, because they're, they're, they're making it unfair for the girls that truly did get sexually assaulted and did get raped and did get attacked and molested and things like that, because they're just smearing their name. They're smearing the word of the, of the woman. They're smearing the good, the good name of the woman for God's sakes. But what are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? It's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy, it's a crazy, crazy world. I was watching, um, a really cool little Netflix thing and it's, um, it's called QB one. And, uh, I, I was watching the new season. I don't know if I watched the other seasons, but I was watching the new season and it's on Netflix. It's like a little, uh, 10 episode, little kind of documentary TV show type thing. And it's about the three top um, quarterbacks in the nation for uh, high school football. And it kind of shows like their, their journey to the preseason of their senior year. And then what their senior year is like, kind of like their family, their home life, their team life, uh, how the team does, how the coaches and stuff handle the team and the situation. And um, I guess how these kids eventually go off to college. And uh, it's really interesting. It's really interesting because these kids are like, I mean, I graduated two years ago, so I was like right in their shoes and uh, the aspect of just being a senior. And like, you could tell like they really are like the super cool kid. Not only were, are they the quarterbacks and the football team, the football teams are actually like phenomenal, like especially down South, like football, football is the real, high school football is the real deal. But um, these kids are not only like really good, they're like state champion type shit. Like they're, 
basketball team won the state champion. I'm on the basketball team. I'm the quarterback. Like they're the straight, the, the super jock cool kids, the coolest of the cool kids. But then you also see, see like, they're just kids, you know what I'm saying? Like they have, they have to live up to that pressure, that pressure of being the coolest of the cool kid in all the classes. Everybody likes you because you're the best athlete and the best quarterback. Like you, you got to show up that Saturday night and prove it to all the, all the little kids that you go to school with every day. That's, that's a lot of pressure for a 17, 18 year old kid. And it's just interesting watching them go through it and deal with it. But they all, a, a lot of these kids, the one thing that you can see like down south, bro, there's some real, they are real football. Like that is a real football, like empire type of thing. Like the high school is like, that's a real team. <clears throat> like you got real coaches. You have a real preseason. Like during some of the team's preseasons, like they camp out for like a week or two and they all sleep together and they all get really close and they all train all day. They wake up at like 4.30 in the morning. Like that's how you get good. That's how you get good. Not showing up at like 8 a.m. and then practice for like two hours and then and then an hour of cool down and then you go home like three hours of practice. Like you're not going to be shit. You know what I'm saying? You need to be taking it serious. You really need to be taking it serious. But that shows like, these these southern schools, these southern high school footballs, man, they're, they're, those are some real football programs. That's the word I was looking for, programs. They are some real football programs. Like they have really good coaches, really good a lot of a lot of a uh, I guess a lot of funding too, a little a lot of funding. Um, and it's just also part of the culture. It's part of the culture that the down the, the 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 South loves their football, man. That high school football too. The kids go play football. It, my son's the quarterback. My son's the quarterback. He's the best player on that field. But it's really interesting. It's uh, called Quarterback QB1 on Netflix. It's a really cool show. And, um, yeah, you should go check it out. Woo! <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Dude, the news. The news has broken. It's like, it's like the... Uh, it's um oh damn it's like the smoke clearing from the stage or this the smoke filling up and then clearing dude i cannot believe the news that happened we're about to go in the hole we're about to, i mean dude i've been going pretty hard i've been going pretty hard i've talked about it before jeffrey epstein jeffrey epstein the child molester that basically got off the hook he just got murdered because, I mean, they said he was suicide. There's no way. He, he had literally had an autopsy and the, and the doctor proved that, um, that it wasn't a, that it wasn't suicide, that it was a strength. He got strangled. The only, like the, the wounds that he had on his neck was obviously from someone strangling him and not from like a, a little rope that he would have committed suicide with and hung himself with in the, uh, prison and also the prison the, the the guards were asleep the camera turned off the light it's a, a bunch of bullshit happened let's just get that off the, let's just get that right on the table a bunch of bullshit happened with someone who arguably has a lot of top secret information on a lot of top secret people um he he was in he had all this information on the Clintons, Hillary, Bill Clinton, the Bushes, Obama, all these top U.S. bankers, Donald Trump. It's insane. Joe Biden, all these people, all these people, the bankers, business owners, huge corporation people. In like, I think there was even like Senate, um, like like pre the the Prime Minister of England, um. May have had ties, may have had ties, we'll see. Or um, someone, it's like someone, high officials in England, because Jeffrey Epstein's assistant just got arrested, and she's British. She's British. I don't know if, I don't think she, my friend said that that's his wife. I don't know if that's his wife, but maybe, we'll just say, maybe, maybe the wife, maybe not. But either way, she was like the assistant in the whole entire organization, which is insane. So basically everything Jeffrey Epstein is known for, got booked for, got arrested for, this lady, what's her name? I got her name right here. Hold on. Uh, Giselaine, Giselaine Maxwell, Giselaine Maxwell. And she 
dude, she literally pulled all the strings. She got the, I think she got the private island. She flew the girls out there. She would manipulate the girls. She got the girls. She found all the people. She would get them out there. She would, she would email all the other people, like the, the, the other famous people, have them come out there. She was the person who would pull the strings. She would like do the little emails and, and, and she would do the dirty work. And then she would do the fucking she would be fucking the little girls with them, bro. And don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if there was little boys too. I would not be surprised if there was also little boys as well. Little boys and little girls. Wouldn't be surprised. But girls as young as 14 years old. It's disgusting, man. That's fucking disgusting, bro. And these, these guys were taking advantage and fucking molesting them. Molesting them. And she got, she got arrested by the FBI, yo. So that's crazy. That's pretty interesting. Because, I mean... The amount, if she dies though, there better be a fucking protest, bro. I will go out there and I will fucking protest, bro. I swear to God, that's insane. I don't know if I swear to God, but dude, if she, if she dies in prison on some, I think she's going to the same prison as Jeffrey Epstein did. If she dies on the, some bullshit, the same way he did, bro, we better be up in arms. We better be up in arms because the government that Jeffrey Epstein, Republicans, Democrats, all these different people, the people that are funding this whole craziness that's going on right now, this whole world chaos right now, they're funding this shit. And Jeffrey Epstein, I think, has a big part to do with what's going on right now. I, I truly do. I truly do. And it, it's crazy. It's such a conspiracy. And I, I'm normally not a, like I'm a, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy guy. But, dude, this corona thing and this whole crazy protest and riots and, and politicians doing this and that and stopping this and that, it's really, like, it just leads you, like, it has to be, like, some, it has to be, has to be some conspiracy shit. And I'm just feeling it. I'm feeling it. I mean, it very well may be just so crazy that our minds can't wrap around it. And as a human brain, you know, is naturally we look for that craziness. We look for like, maybe it is this crazy thing that I'm just not thinking of. It is a conspiracy. But I mean, a lot of times that's not true. And it's, um, it's just, it is what it is. But I mean, with what's been going on and, and the way he died and just like the people he knew and the blackmail he had on people, it's just so obvious. It's so obvious and it's been done before. The government has lied to us before. So to say that they're not lying again would be would be um, very ignorant on your part to uh, say that because they've lied to us plenty of times. Why? What would make them feel inclined to not lie again? What would make them feel obliged to tell the truth and, and stay true to themselves and stay true to the American people that they fuck anyways, that they fuck over these corporations. They, 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 they bankrupt, they go bankrupt. They fail the U S economy. They fail the housing markets. And then the CEOs get paid half a billion dollars. That's, 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 it's criminal. It's criminal. It's criminal. And no one talks about it. No one really talks about it. It gets swept under the media. The media sweeps it under the media picks up violent shit like this. They pick, they pick shit, police officers versus citizens and shit like that. Like, that's what they pick. But they're not picking all of our citizens getting fucked, getting fucked by the people in charge. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. But today's the day, bro. I, I've been talking about it all podcast. I'm going to continue to talk about it. Maybe this is what this podcast is going to be. You know what I'm saying? Maybe on my, on my solos, like I said, I'm having hella people on this podcast. I'm about to be interviewing hella people. But, um... That's really what this podcast is going to be about. Mostly just like interviewing, having people on, meeting new people, seeing what these damn people are about, seeing what their lives are like. But I mean, sometimes we're going to have to talk about the reality of things. We're going to have to talk about what's really going on, like maybe behind the scenes that like a lot of people aren't, you watch a video, but you didn't watch the 40 minutes before and the 40 minutes after. So how can you feel confident and how can you feel moral how can you feel moral enough to repost something that, that you don't even know is fully true or you don't know the context of it? It's really, and, and you can, a lot of times you can find what, the background. You can find the context that you're missing and people are just not willing to put in that work. They're not willing to put in that effort. So sometimes I'm going to have to explain to you the, to them what's going on. It's really sad. I see a lot of smart people getting manipulated, reposting the same shit every day. Stupid shit. Not everything's stupid, but some things are just damn, like, read a book about it, read something about it, read about it, read about it, well, who used to say that, uh, famous Dex, uh, whatever happened to that guy, that guy might have died from drugs, I could be wrong, I, I, 
I haven't, I haven't seen that. I don't really go on social media. I just post social media because I have a podcast and YouTube, but I don't really go on social media. Just a little bit of Instagram. And a lot of people are starting to get unfollowed. Not because I don't like them. I might have to make a post too. I kind of feel bad. But like, I look, you want to unfollow like hundreds. I've already unfollowed hundreds, but I want to follow hundreds and hundreds more. Just because, dude, these people are posting the dumbest things. And also, they're not watching the podcast. I post this podcast every day. I just want some people to watch my podcast, man. No one watches the podcast. No one that I follow, like a few, a very few. I doubt anybody is even watching up to this point right now because we, we're 40 minutes in the podcast. Most people don't watch that long until, you know, you really start getting a following and people that actually like your content and like who you are will actually respect your content and watch your content. But, you know, people that follow you just because you went to middle school and, and high school and elementary school and you went to summer camp with them and now they're following you. And they don't want to watch your stuff. Like, why am I still following you? Like, they have a boyfriend. Like, why? I'm not going to. All right. So we're, I'm probably never going to date you. You're all in love and shit. Probably just going to follow you. I know you don't watch my shit. <laughs> the only people I, I'm about to st still uh, follow, people that uh, I know support me, I grew up with. And also people that I see doing, make, making small businesses, making, making moves, making power moves, man. Like, it, it's time. Like, it's time to do something with your life. Like, hate seeing people do nothing so it's uh it's a little frustrating but it's mainly the people that are just so manipulated by the media and the news and just posting the more the most idiotic and dumbest things the most ignorant things like you can read a book about it and you don't have to repost like they repost it every day like you have 700 followers you follow 600 people who else are you trying to show and you're posting on your story so your story only gets one third of the views as you're as you're following so if you have 700 let's say you have a thousand followers and you post on your story you're probably going to get maybe two three if you're a girl and they think it's a bikini post maybe you'll get 500 views other than that dude if you're not posting bikinis it'll it's going to be straight two to three hundred and that's so true it's crazy how girls like when they start posting more like pretty pics and bikini and more sh revealing pictures their following goes up crazy it's insane it's insane what a business plan what a fucking business plan <laughs> what a business plan right there yo shout out to the ladies for that one i gotta hop on that wave yo showing a little bikini pic Ooh. <laughs> maybe my following will go up but yeah it, it, it's just frustrating following people that um that, uh, but that's why I don't really use social media. Only Instagram. Only Instagram. And I got to get them following that. Like I said, man, I can't be following these people that I don't even know. It's like, I don't even know you. Why am I following you? I feel bad. But it is what it is. It's okay. I'm not mad at it. I'm not hating. I'm not hating, bro. Bro, you're fucking hating. Bro, I'm not hating, bro. <laughs> but man, dude, hopefully... I, I, if corona cases go up like they have, they, they, they certainly are. They're going up. I'm hoping the hospitalization rate, some some hospitalization rates are going up in some states. I'm hoping the death rate is not spiking. The death rate's not spiking the same way as the case increase is. But we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll, really, we'll, we'll see. It's really interesting. I think we're dealing with a virus from a lab, a lab virus, which is insane. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody is talking about it, but... But it, 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 but as like a, as just a regular Joe, you feel very like weak, like weakless, like you can't do anything about it. Like you, you learn like, oh, Jeffrey Epstein's raping little girls and all of our top politicians are boys with him. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck are we supposed to do? Both the guys we voted, we're about, we're about to vote for are, have ties with this child molester. Like, let's be real, man. These guys are child molesters. <laughs> These guys are criminals. I've been saying it. These white collar crimes. It's insane. And they just get blown, blown under the rug. Just like these college sexual assaults. Man, this podcast is a little, a little crazy. This podcast is getting a little crazy. A lot of opinion, not a lot of facts. What's going on out here? <laughs> but, uh, man, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. It's like I said, man, it's really just sad seeing a lot of smart people like just fully like you're so not thinking like you're so smart, right? If you're so smart, you would be able to recognize whatever situation you are about to post and then make your <clears throat> own assessment about that post, right? If you're so smart and you're so 
I'm college educated and I'm this and I'm that. I'm all this, right? If you're so good at that, then you can talk about, you can make a video like this. You can make a video and say, oh, well, I think this is wrong and this is right and this this has to be fixed. But, but no, that doesn't happen. You repost a fucking white privilege. This is what you can do. Swipe right and you just swipe right. Some 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 company made that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's ridiculous. It's, re- it's really ridiculous. It's really a crime. It's a crime with what's happening to our society and people are just falling for it. I feel so bad. It's crazy, man. It's cr- like, I don't know what to do. I feel helpless. That's what it is. You feel helpless, not weakless. It's not even a goddamn word. <laughs> helpless. I try to stay optimistic though, you know. Optimism is the optimism is the way to go, I guess. You, you try to just laugh at little things, try to find some things of uh funny. I mean, if, if you find everything um crazy and you try to be violent with everything then you're going to be a violent angry person and you're going to draw that you 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 pour out negativity you're going to bring in negativity you know what i'm saying so if you're putting out negative comments and a negative aspect of life you're going to suck that shit right back up and you're just going to be on a negative circle so it's it's very slippery slope it's all all of it all of this stuff that's happening is a very slippery slope. Someone telling me I have to wear a mask. I have to wear a mask. I'm not sick. I feel great. I feel like a million fucking bucks. I have to wear a mask. Why? Well, you might get someone else sick. Well, I'm not sick. So, well, we don't know that. What the fuck? What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you cannot shut down the economy. And like, it's crazy though. It's crazy. It's like how how quickly are we going? Like, I wear a mask when I when I when I gotta go into a store when they say wear a mask. Of course, I'm not gonna be an asshole. I'm trying to start a fight. But at the same time, like, how far are we gonna go? How far is like where's the line gonna be drawn? And that's the slippery slope that you don't want to get onto. You know, like these politicians, it's the same thing as cops. You give a you give a fucking human being a gun and a badge and you tell him he can fucking arrest people and he can fucking kill people if his life's on the line. Like that's a lot of fucking power for a human being, for just another average Joe, for just another fucking Joe Schmo. You know, and these politicians, they're just another human being. They're just putting a little bit of a better life, a little bit of a probably an easier situation financially growing up. They're a little bit smarter than us probably. And also their parents probably just put them in the right position to get that. Their parents are probably politicians. That's really what it is. Imagine like a Senator and a Congressman, they, they have a child and it's like, fuck, they might as well go be a governor, right? We might as well help our children go be the governor, something we never did. And then they have a family of politicians. Like it's so obvious. It's so, it's so right in our face. And we still just want to argue with each other about meaningless stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. How far are we going to go? And and burning down these statues, trying to take down these statues. How far are we going to go? That's what Hitler did. I understand trying to remove the, the Confederate flag. That's definitely bad. I, 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 I agree. Get rid of it. Some of these stat, some of these statues are a little iffy. I understand it. But um, it's also a little bit of American history. It's got to be portrayed a little bit differently. Like also like that statue is really not oppressing you. Let's be real. Like that's that that statue sitting right there in wherever it is is not stopping you from going to get the job that you want. And that like that's the truth. So for anybody to say that that like this statue is fucking oppressing me from doing something like no it's not. Like maybe maybe it's not a good meaning and we should probably attack that and we probably should evaluate that we should probably evaluate the way we teach our young youngsters about christopher columbus you know we we teach him that they're that he's like this great guy that came over here meanwhile he genocided a lot of people had slaves and shit like i understand i understand where it's coming from but at the same time there's a fine like i just said there's a fine line with burning down and removing our u.s history and just the world history that's world history he found this land before it was America, before it was United States, he found this shit. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, he found the Bahamas. All right, well, he found it. <laughs> he found it, dog. He told everybody else to come out here. So it, it's 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 a fine line. It's a, and also like to 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 say that 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 statue is like like I said, stopping you from reaching your goals is is not true. That, that statue is not stopping you from reaching your goals. That's not a true statement. What is stopping a lot of people is the systemic racism and just and uh, judicial reform that needs to happen, like legalized marijuana, things in that aspect, things that 
that's that that low key should be one of the biggest things in the news right now. We need to press legalize marijuana and free people that are in jail for nonviolent only mar- small marijuana charges. Like shit like that. Like that should be the push. That should be the push, not abolish the police. But the fact that the media is even trying to cover like oh, they're, they're, people want to do like it's obviously so much bigger than that. It's obviously getting funded and pulled and strings are being pulled and people don't want to talk about what's really going on and it's crazy. It's sad. It's so sad. And it's I'm not cool with it. Yo, I'm really not cool with it. it, it it's not cuz I mean, I've I've read some history books. I've read systemic racism books. I've read white privilege books. I've, I've read the stuff. I've read the material. I've read it. I've read Sapiens. I've read about how human beings and, and white Europeans are the first to settle out here. Like, I've read it. I learned about it. I know a lot of these people posting this shit have not learned about it, have not even tried to learn, teach themselves about it, have not even tried to to learn about what what it, what they feel inside how so they can attack their own type of demons and what they've been taught. Everybody's got different beliefs. Everybody's been taught differently. Everybody's got deeper racist roots than anybody else. And some people might not have any. Some people might have really, really deep ones that they might not even fully know. So to say that your experience is different than, or your experience is the same and equal to my experience, when we know that's not true, when we all are arguing that that's not what we're fighting for, everybody is different. And <clears throat> well, everybody's equal, but and, and nobody's equal. Like, let's be real. Nobody's equal. That's what it is. Everybody should be treated equal. I guess in the law, in the law, people should be treated equal. You know, if I don't want to treat someone, you know what I'm saying? It's, you, you almost don't have to treat any. It's, it's really interesting. Like I said, it's a slippery slope. Freedom of speech. People trying to cut off the freedom of speech. It's just interesting. It's just mad interesting to see how these people are going to sides, going to teams, picking teams. They pick a team and then they attack the other team for the same shit that they picked this team for, you know? It's like, oh, I'm not joining you guys because you do this. And then you go and you do the same exact thing. It's, it's like, it's crazy. It's like caveman. It's like caveman at the most highest level right now, throwing sticks and stones at each other, sticks and stones and spears and hoping that someone gets nailed with a damn spear. But man, I know it, it's been a crazy podcast. I, I'm all over the place. It's just, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. People, people are just, ins- people are losing their minds. People are crazy. Like the things people say is just insane. It's ins- the people, the things that people are willing to promote and say publicly are insane. And that certain things are okay, like so socially and so- certain things are not okay. When they're both just as absurd, but just different absurdities. You know, it's, it's so fascinating. It's so fascinating, but what are you going to do, man? All you can do is just keep learning, keep educating. As long as you know what you know, like no one can take that away from you. Like if you want to learn about some white privilege, read about it. If you want to learn about slavery and stuff like that, read about it. I, I definitely recommend that. Learn about it. Read about it. Don't let somebody, don't let somebody post a fucking Instagram post and tell you the fucking white privilege, U.S. fucking slave history. You're not going to get that from a fucking Instagram post. You got to go read fucking real books, real biographies, real history. You got to go watch real documentaries, real history movies and stuff like that. And a lot of them are different depictions, different things like that. A lot of it is um sometimes can be absent history where it, it misses real facts that um like maybe certain uh maybe certain people don't want to own up to certain slave facts. Maybe um uh, I'm not I'm just giving an example. But maybe someone owned a slave and they didn't talk about how much they abused them and stuff like that. And they downplayed that. So when you read like a book like that and you learn about this type of character that owned slaves, you're like, oh, he wasn't that bad to his slaves. Meanwhile, the the author or the historians in the past tried to take that out because like, ah, this was fucked up. So that's real, too. That's absent history. So it's it's interesting, man. It's a crazy world. I hope everybody's OK. I'm about to wrap this podcast up because my mouth is getting a little dry. Mm. But guys, like I said, read a book. God bless you for listening. Thank you so much. I hope everybody is staying safe, staying, staying sane, staying healthy. Uh, please stay tuned for more podcasts. I'm going to be having some guests on very, very, very shortly. Hopefully, like I said, it is July 3rd. And uh, by all, by the end of July, we are definitely going to be having guests on. And it, it'll be rocking and rolling. I'm really excited. But uh, guys, smash that like button. Drop a comment. Check your boy out on Instagram. Got nothing else for you. Thank you so much. Take it easy, guys.